The, uh, the power switch is on the left side of the control panel. It's, you can't actually see it, and it's one of those like toggle switches. <coughs> um, so when, when you come, you're just going to have to find it. Um, so the control panel here um, has a lot of information, um, some of it that you guys aren't going to use at all. But uh, So basically, the way that we're going to control this is um, you have a north-south wheel here, which basically is going to move this stage forward and back. And we have our east-west wheel, which is going to move the stage side to side. And then we have our speed and feed knobs, right? And so feed relates to how much this little arm is going to move forward with every section, right? So there's a little um, window here which says feed, and then it has a, a number under it. Right now it's set to 710 nanometers, which is way too much. Um, and then you can just move this knob and set it to whatever thickness you want. And then the speed, what that does is it tells you, or it defines how fast you actually cut through the sample, which is not the same as the speed that the arm actually moves when you're not cutting through the sample. So I'll, I'll show you guys, it'll make more sense in a second. So um, this whole little speed feed memory bank, you guys are not going to be using it at all. Um, we have an advanced reset here. so. I don't know if you guys can tell, there's a little bar here under the advance that fills up as this, as this arm goes forward, because it has a, only like a certain amount that it can go forward. And once it reaches the end, you have to reset it. So right now it's like a quarter of the way, but we'll reset it anyway. Um, what you do is you just press and hold the button until you hear it beep, like that, and then it'll start going. And then when it's done, it'll give you a, a little signal. Um, Right up here we have the illumination buttons, which you guys probably already know. I think you guys are probably trimmed on this uh, microtome. Mm. And then um, here we have this interesting part, which is the window set. So what you're setting here in this window is the window of space in the cutting arm where you're actually cutting. So <clears throat> let's get started. So do you, do you guys, somebody have like a sharp knife and a sample that we can cut into? Short sample. Um, I have one knife left. I was going to save it for after I got You have enough memory left? Three point six gigabytes. That one's good. I have one more. Not just pause it while we're not doing it. So this is the actual holder, kind of like what's over there. Um, just remember <coughs> that when this little knob is this way and it's loose, you can pull this out. So if you tried to pick it up from right here, you just can pull the whole thing up. Or if you tipped it over, you might drop it. So just remember that it, it actually tightens in. Um, and it fits in here, and then you have these little uh, knobs that tighten it up. And just like I said earlier, do not tighten it that tight. It really doesn't need to be that tight. Um, and then, yeah, you can do your trimming on here. And then when you're ready, you uh, can go ahead and put your sample in. And so I usually, before I put my sample in, like to look at it and um, decide like what the best orientation for the block to go in is. Um, and I think I've told you guys this. What's the best way to put in your block? Like, which way should the trapezoid be facing? Down. What? Well, I mean, down. It's a trapezoid. What's the top of it? Um, so, like, <laughs> the narrow part on the top or on the bottom? Bottom. That's right. Do you guys remember why I said that's a good way of doing it? Um, is it because of the support? So if it's the bigger part? Kind of. So what it is is that um, <clears throat> it's better to have less friction at the beginning of your cut and more at the end as opposed to the opposite um, so that when you cut, like, it's, it's spreading and adding friction, you know? So it does kind of go into the support thing, um, but it also it just, like, allows the sections to come off cleaner, mm. you know? What if you're using a block that has a square? Face. Then you just put it. I mean, there's no way to put it Then it's it in. even. Um, there's only one way to put it in a square. I mean, actually, that's not <laughs> rectangular. Sorry. It's, so if it's, it's rectangular, rectangular. Um, you're going to want to use it the wide way rather than the okay. narrow way. Careful. Quiz, quiz question. Yeah. How do you put it? That's the best <laughs> way to put it in when it's a square. No, that's the hard part, is finding the power. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Okay, so when you. Um, when you're going to be putting your knife in, 
always try to get as close as you can, but never be too greedy, because running into your block face is like, it just wastes so much of your time. So I'm going to go ahead and get it centered on here, onto the further right side of my blade, since I'm just going to be facing this block right now. So is that the rough side of your blade? Yeah, like the less less sharp side. So when you face it, use the rough side. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really not rough. It's just not as sharp as the other side, you know? It's still super sharp. Less sharp. Yeah. Less sharp. Oh, okay, so this is a good thing to teach you guys. So sometimes when you are, are trying to advance, it starts beeping at you and it doesn't let you advance anymore. And the reason why it's doing this is because we've reached the limit of this stage. So what we have to do is just sit here and crank it all the way back. And then when it reaches the furthest back point, it'll beep at me again. And then I'll go forward a little bit. Because if you leave it at that furthest back point, um, you get some lag in the advance. And then um, and the machine knows that, so it actually like doesn't like for you to leave it at the end there. So you guys can see that it's moving back slowly but surely. Yeah, so this is a reason why when you um, like when you put your knife in, you want to advance as far as you can forward so that you don't hit this limit straight away, you know? There we go. So see how it's just like really mad at me right now? So I'm just going to pull forward a little bit, and then it's good. So now I can pull this all the way up to the, to the block. And so now I can start doing my alignment. Right? So what is the first step in trying to align into doing the approach, trying to align the, the block face and the knife? Look for the shadow. Okay, so okay, we're not going to add water yet because we're just uh, facing the block. Um, and then, so this one is not so bad, um, but if, you're, if your block is really uneven, you're just not going to see the shadow. So you have to do like the best job you can aligning it and then start cutting sections and you'll get a like flat block face after you've cut enough sections um, but obviously you want to like save some time so you want to do the least amount of that as you can so I'm gonna go ahead and start the alignment here Dang. No switch. do you have a better view right now than I do So how do I know if my block is um, at the right tilt? Like, how do I know that this is in the right position? What would you do to know? I would say based on the little segment that you start cutting. Like, if you see that, it's just like shaving off the So let's assume the for a second that you had a sample that was one cell layer thick. And so you really don't want to cut more sections than you want. So what would you have to do? Can you rephrase that question again? Okay, so how do I know that the like vertical angle of my block is right? Like, what tells you whether this is at the right angle or not? So, what you can do is you can see the rising of the light as you're spinning it. It's right. not actually cutting the sample, mm -hmm. but just spinning mm -hmm. it. Exactly. So see. Exactly. So, we can look at what he's basically getting at is the distance between the knife edge and the sample as the sample moves past the knife edge, right? So if my sample is like this, it's going to start really far away from my knife and then hit my knife, right? So that's something you always want to like make sure you don't do, um, because if you are making your adjustments, say I'm, I, I think I'm making my adjustments and I'm making this lateral adjustment, I'm like, okay, I'm perfectly lined up. Now I'm going to try to get a slice. Then you cut into like your sample and you got to retrim it and everything. So that's something that I always like to keep in mind before I start making other adjustments is... If this is way off, you're not like you're going to be only aligning to one part of the block, right? And then the rest of it isn't going to be aligned. So that's another reason, like when you make um, adjustments, if you're really, really close to your block, it's a good idea to pull the knife back a little bit, then make the adjustment, and then go forward. All right. So this one needs to go this way. You should. Um, what Tom was saying about if it's one cell layer thick, a lot of labs work with tissue culture. 
Those really are only one, maybe yeah. one and a half layers. Six. One cell layer. Though I'm doing a project saying that's so they're yeah. very difficult to sample, and that vertical angle is important because you don't want to cut halfway through your sample. And you just mess up the ones, right? And that's very common. I mean, tissue culture <coughs> labs are very, very common. You want to, you know, cut like parallel to the cell, yeah, of course. And so that, you know, that looking at that distance between the knife edge and the top and the bottom for differences is critical. Yeah. That's probably the most important. Yeah, and that's why it's not just a, like, us trying to save time thing. It's like, you want to save as much sample as you can yeah. when you're doing this. That'd be really cool, though. Having an attachment lens um, to the side of the, of the microtome that allows you to look from this angle. You just don't need it. You really don't. You don't. I mean, so... When we start working on that one, we're going to do like a team alignment, and you'll see that you just really don't need it. I'll have you do that one. So, okay. I brought my knife right up to my sample. Um, so, basically what I want to do now is actually face the block. So, I'm going to cut a series of sections into the block until I'm cutting the entire block face, right? So, on this microtome, it's actually really nice um, compared to that one because you can actually set a step size on here. So there's a little window here on the left that says step size with a plus and minus, and then it has a, a value above it. So right now it's set at 0 0.6 microns, which is 600 nanometers, um, which is kind of a lot for, for our knives. Um, so I'm going to dial it back <coughs> to 500 na nanometers. And you're, you can cut some pretty thick sections when you're just trying to face the block. It's not important to get really nice thin sections. Sorry, did you need to get something? Okay. <laughs> Nobody needs to move. <laughs> cool. Um, all right. So um, basically, I'm gonna I'm gonna start on this, and then I'll let you guys do a couple of cuts yourselves. Um, all we're doing, like I said, is just trying to get the entire block face to be as flat as we can. Right. So. Oh, sorry. I didn't really mention. So you have it set to 500, and then there's two step buttons on here, and when you push the step forward button, that means it's gonna step forward 500 nanometers every time you push the button. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is actually really useful for um, when you guys start to do your thin sections because if you are making your approach, like what, I'm sure you guys that have done your thick sections already, you've seen that like you get really close and you think you're like at the right amount and then you get a little too close and then you cut this really big like slice, right? So when you do thin sections, that's really bad. And if you're using a diamond knife, you can ruin your diamond knife by doing something like that. So this step size thing is really useful because you can set it to say, 100 nanometers and then just go and step forward 100 nanometers each time and you know that you're not going to cut more than what is the thickness that your diamond knife or whatever knife can actually can actually cut you know so that's what we're going to do right now um, I'm going to go ahead and start so that it doesn't take us forever um, and then I'll have you guys come in and just step forward make a cut and do that like two or three times And uh, when you're doing it, just like make sure you're doing, looking at all the things we've talked about so far, like is the angle right, um, watch how the sections come off, are we getting the whole block face. Mm. So we seem to be cutting more from the left side of mm -hmm. the block, right? So you want to step forward with every time because we're trying to face the block. Like that. Yep, and then now you'll see it'll cut a nice little section for it. <coughs> so, okay. Sorry, I forgot to mention this. So this is a good good moment to mention this. On this little panel, see this little arrow is black right now? Mm -hmm. So the the microtome has like two parts of the the motion of the arm. It's got the cutting one and the return one, right? And the way that this microtome moves is it's going down and then back and then up like this, right? Where that one is going to the side. Um, so the reason why it's like not letting, like right now if you try to move things, it's not going to let you, um, and that's because uh, if you were to say you had it up against your knife edge right now, right? You're like, oh, okay, let me approach up to my, my block, and now I'm going to cut a section. All of a sudden, it's going to move forward the next time yeah. it's saying you're going to cut a huge, huge section, you know? So, so this microtome, yeah, has it built in for you not to be able to make those adjustments so that you don't make that mistake, right? Yeah. So if you move the wheel and get back into the cutting stroke, yeah. Now it lets you. Now it lets you do whatever you want. Yep. 
And so, like, that microtome doesn't tell you, but that's a rule that you should always live by is don't make any adjustments mm -hmm. during the return stroke. I mean, with that one, it would be really dumb because it's way off to the side. But you'll see, like, with this one, it's not as digital as this one, so it, it can let you do those kinds of things, so it's important to keep that in mind. Did you press the step size? Press now? No. Okay. No, you, the step size we set at 500. Oh, okay. um, it seems to be a lot uh, user friendly. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not a little bit easier to pick up. Yeah, it's just a lot of manual, I guess. Yeah. And so another one of the things that we're going to learn today that I think is going to help you guys a lot with your thick sections is you're going to learn how to cut them automatically, like yeah. with the motor, um, which is going to help you get way more consistent. Um, I think it was Jared. You were working on this one before, right? Mm -hmm. So your water level was a little high. Mm -hmm. So. The reason why you want the water level to be right is because you want the sections to actually come off flat into the water. If they're going up into the water, they can actually they can actually get um, like backed up and they'll just wrinkle up there. Yeah. And if the water is too low, they'll just hit the, gra the glass and then they'll wrinkle up on the glass, right? So the water level is really important. And it's also really important to keep an eye on the water level as you're working. It's probably about every like 20, 30 minutes you have to add a couple of drops to make it the right amount. Can we see it after you fill it? Yes. Yeah, we're all gonna cut sections, so. Alright, so I'm going to do my alignments like I usually do, and like you guys usually do it, so I'm going to bring my knife edge uh, really close to my block until I can see a good little black line on the bottom so I can use the shadow. Uh, I'm going to, one of the things that I like to do to, um, to examine the lateral angle of the knife is I like to bring the knife all the way up to the block face until the shadow pretty much disappears. Because what you, what you get to see if it's not perfectly aligned is the shadow will disappear on one side before on the other side. So you can just um, you use that as your, your base. It's actually a little bit easier than trying to be really far away and like barely seeing an angle on the line. Um, so yeah, I like to just get real nice and close. And then I, I use this also to, um, to determine the vertical angle. So what I'll do is I'll move my sample slowly past my knife edge and I say slowly not only because I'm trying to examine, but because, like I said before, like you can't run into your knife edge. So whenever you're going to check this vertical angle, just be really, really slow. Make sure you don't ruin your block. Um, and basically what I'm doing is I'm watching that shadow either get fatter or thicker as I move the sample past. Sorry. <clears throat> okay. So because we... Um, like we faced our block on here and everything, all the alignments are almost there. Um, but when you put a new knife in, don't assume that it's still perfectly aligned because a lot of little things can change it. Like you guys have seen that sometimes your knives are sort of like bow shaped. Um, so that's like a different angle on each part of the blade. Um, you guys have also <clears throat> probably seen that sometimes the knife doesn't like fit the same way into the holder. So it's not gonna be the same thing. <coughs> So the point is, whenever you change the knife, um, do all the realigning steps again. All right. All right, so now this is pretty well aligned. So I'm gonna do the tech, basically the same technique we were doing before, but rather than 500 microns, I'm gonna drop it down to, let's do 300. We'll do 300, not microns, nanometers, sorry. Uh, and so you'll notice on here, by the way, I don't know if you guys know this, but it says zero comma three. Um, this is a like European made instrument and in Europe, mm -hmm. commas are decimals, so. Weird. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to get a couple of thick sections here. 
So basically I'm doing what we did. I'm not at the actual knife edge yet, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to step forward the 300 <clears throat> nanometers until I get a section, and then I can start collecting thick sections. And yeah, this part, like, you don't have to be too scared to do it kind of fast, because usually you'll just get, like, a tiny, tiny little, like, I just got it, like a tiny little sliver of plastic that will, like, get on the knife edge, and then you stop right there, because you know that the next section is going to be, like, a full section, you know? So, I want you guys to come down, take a section by hand, and then we'll learn how to do them on the I really want to hook up a camera to one of these. It would be so much easier to teach you guys. A wheel. Like, imagine if there was just a screen up there. And you could just yeah. See how can you tell if the water level is too high? Okay, so um, the reason we know the water level is right here is because it has that like sheen on the top. When you look through the eyepieces, it looks like a mirror, right? Yeah. So that's what you want to see. If it's anything other than that, it's not the right water level. Got it. So before you uh, actually step forward and make a cut, just do like one practice, um, like go through the blade. Because sometimes what happens is um, this microtome has this really weird characteristic. So. If you like stop, say you were taking sections, you got your sections, and you wanted to collect your sections, and so you stop sectioning for say five or ten minutes because you were doing all the other stuff, for some reason the little arm is never in the same position it was before. So what I usually do, like if I stop, is I'll step back like one or two steps, and then I'll like step forward again. Because I've had it happen where I've had a diamond knife on here, and I was just hanging out, and I collected my sections, and then I came back to it, and it probably cut like a two micron section, like ridiculously thick section, and that whole part of the knife blade was ruined. So, mm -hmm. so you want me to not? Mm -hmm. So, go ahead and just do a couple, uh, like go past the knife edge without stepping forward or back. I don't think we're actually going to hit it, but if you do, it probably is just going to be a really thin section. It did really thin. Yeah. So now you can step forward. Okay. And then you should get a nice little section like the other ones that are in there. Yep. There you go. Do it one more time and then pass it out. So if you stop on the thermal advance, it's sort of the opposite because if you cut. You have to tell it where the actual cut is so that way it slows down at where you're cutting and then it can speed up for the whole rest of the cycle. And so the way that you do that is. I'm going to take this step. The way that you do that is you, um, there's two, there's a little box here that says window and there's two buttons. One says cut start and the other one says cut end. And all you have to do is look through the eyepieces um, and get your sample direct, like right before the knife edge and then push cut start and then move it through and then go right past the knife edge and then hit cut end. And basically that, what that does is it just tells it what that window is that you want to cut in. So right now this is set to 79 nanometers. So since we're trying to get thick sections, I'm going to crank it up to, let's do 300. And then we'll keep the speed at 0.4 millimeters per second. That's a pretty, pretty good speed. So since we already have everything lined up, this is really easy. Um, all we really have to do is just push the run button and then it'll just start getting sections right. <coughs> So can we assume that 0.4 is something that we can... Um, yeah, the 0.4 is good. Um, 0.6 is not a big deal either. I watched Dr. Barlow even do like one sometimes. Um, so it just, it really depends. I like to go a little bit slower sometimes um, just because it like sometimes gives me better sections. Mm -hmm. But sometimes if I have like really sticky plastic, I want to go faster so that it comes off of the, the knife edge. 
Is there any advantage? So go ahead and take a look and watch it. Cut sections. Is there any advantage to using this way rather than hand? Yes. So basically, what we were talking about earlier with the like the thickness not being um, even when you do it by hand. Yeah. And that's because you're not cutting at like an even speed every time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this will help you get way better sections. Can I actually look more? Still time wrinkling up. Yeah. Yeah, because we're still cutting pretty thick sections. Um, so I'll actually crank it down so we can see the, the difference. So Thomas, it's funny that you mention that because I've seen before like someone used the motorized automatic advance and when they cut the sections it still has different colors, meaning that the thickness is still... Yeah, so that can happen for, for tons of different reasons. Um, <coughs> yeah, here we go. Um, like these are still kind of wrinkling up, but uh, it can be um, if you don't tighten something all the way, like if you forgot to tighten your sample in, it can be moving around. Um, it could be, the blade thing. yeah, like the blade might not be good. It could be the microtome itself mm -hmm. um, that sometimes will do it. It could be, I mean, if you're just trying to get <coughs> thin sections, it can be something as little as just someone walking in the room that can do that to your really? section. Wow, yeah. that dude. The air and just close the door while I'm doing <laughs> you know, water yeah. level, knife angle. Yeah, there's there's tons of different things that affect yeah. that, so it's difficult to be like, this is why, you know. What causes uh, multiple colors? The, the colors are the thickness. Right, so, like, so, so even one so slice has... That's why we have these. So right. yeah, the slice is different thicknesses. Right, so even one slice has you know, different areas on the slice that are of multiple. Yeah. And yeah, that's just a, like a matter of the knife and all the other things we were talking about. Right. Like when you cut with a diamond knife and you're getting thin sections, like they all look exactly the same. Yeah. That's what I saw in the, the old video they had. Yeah, so I'll actually, can I see real quick? I'll, yeah. uh, I'll crank this down so we get some nice thin sections. So the, the most obvious, which we didn't even think about, was every time you cut a section, the blade is a little bit less. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing we want to stay away from those rainbow colored slices. It's not a big deal. <laughs> yeah, and like, I don't know if you guys can tell, this blade is super dull right now. Yeah, I was just about to ask that. Since we've been cutting a bunch. So you just so move yeah, it a little to the left? Yeah, I'm going to move it to the right because we're really far to the left. But... That's so cool. Two or four, actually. It's working. That's when we started doing this. Uh, I didn't even think about the two or four. Yeah, for two or four, they did this to avoid having to actually <laughs> draw. <laughs> yeah, we're able to that's no, we never cut any of any of <coughs> I just set it to that so that I uh, the arm wouldn't advance every time you cut because it advances like, automatically. Yeah, no, 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 it'll yeah. advance so automatically with every like turn of the wheel. I really did not think about that in 204. That's great. I love the, I love, because you really get a lesson of Mostly because this is um, really similar to the other two microtomes. So the, uh, the control panel for this one is up here. This entire bottom section is just for cryo sectioning, so we're not worried about it at all. Um, power button is the green button. It'll turn on. Are you, are you cooling the block in cryo No, when we use the cryo sectioning, um, there's actually an entire attachment that g comes onto here, mm -hmm. um, and it, uh, like, you actually like fill it with liquid nitrogen, mm -hmm. oh. and so the whole everything is cold. Wow. Like you're not using plastic samples; you're using samples that are preserved by plunging them in liquid nitrogen. Wow. Yeah. What's the uh, the purpose of doing that? It's for um, tissues, right? Live tissue. Yeah. Well, not live tissue because you froze it, but oh, yeah. it's um, it's so that you're not using fixatives and you're not using plastic. <coughs> so you're literally just looking at the tissue. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you can do immuno antibody staining oh. at the electron microscope level, and you don't have to worry. Does your fixation is is the fixation critical? Because you've removed it. Oh. Okay. Yep. All right, so um, this microtome I think is really cool because it's kind of this like 
hybrid between those two in that it's a lot more mechanized than that one, but a lot less digital than the, than the Leica, which is really nice. Um, so this one, the illumination is this wheel here on the left. And as you turn it, it'll go to different types of illumination, and it's got all these different options that you can choose that I don't even know what some of them are. <laughs> so I just um. use all. All is a good, is a good option, usually. Um, it uses the same little tool as that one to put your samples in and out. Um, um, and then it's the same kind of concept. The hole is right here. Just got to find it. So yeah, sometimes, and it's same with that one, if this is turned really far, the hole that you use to unscrew it can be hidden inside of here. So if you can't find it, it's not because it's gone, you just have to turn it. So we'll take this sample out. Let's actually take this knife. So to loosen the knife, uh, there's this little uh, bar right here that you just move, and then that allows this to come out. And then this guy I already loosened up, so you can just take them out. If you guys notice, this is like not uh, set the right way. Whoever the last researcher was was just using it at this angle. So the way that you um, adjust this is there's a little knob back here, and you can loosen it, and then the whole mechanism can move. And then on this one, similar to um, that one, you can actually trim by just taking out this whole mechanism and um, and putting it like on your trimming block, which should be right there. The right there it is, which is right here. So you can just put this in here, and then this guy on top, and then you put your sample in here, and you can do all your trimming and stuff. So we'll put this back. And yeah, you always gotta try to make this as uh, as vertical as possible or else when you actually take your your cuts, your sample is gonna be moving like diagonally across the blade. And it's like, yeah, really bad when that happens. All right, so we can go ahead and put our sample in. We're gonna use the same one we were just using. Because we already faced this block, we don't need to really worry about facing it. We can just get right into the, the meat of it. <clears throat> so these work the exact same way as the ones on there and that one. You can move this guy. Here's the, the knife angle. So we're going to add the water right away. Thomas? Yes. It's the same feature. What's the, again? What's the purpose of this feed, this piece right here? Um, so this um, it allows you to ensure that your knife is like perfectly straight up. Okay. Um, we don't really need it because we make like knives with a knife maker, so they're always going to be good. Okay. Water. Yes, please. This one. Is this clean? I don't, I don't uh, clean know. enough. Okay. For today, this will work. But that's a good good observation. Always make sure you're using clean water. to improvement. 
Yeah, I just recently started working on this one, and I like it a lot. Well, what's the, really nice is you know that the that it's good because that sample holder is basically the same. I mean, this one is pretty hydrophobic, so it's just kind of doing that. But uh, so usually what I like to do is I'll overfill it first. Like today, we're not really um, worried about it, but what I'll do is I'll overfill it and then I'll clean off the water with the lens paper. Have I taught you guys how to do that? Yeah. <coughs> okay, then we clean off the water, uh -huh. and then I'll go and like remove water until I'm at that right level, you know? Okay. And if you're really good, you can put exactly the right amount when you overfill it, that when you clean it, it ends up at the perfect <laughs> level. That's very really good. <laughs> Some people like, uh, like myself, when we put too much water in and we don't want to use the squeezy thing to take it out, we'll just take a piece of very tight lens paper that's woven narrowly and just dip the, the just the tip of it and yeah. pull it out quickly. Yep. And that'll just lower it and so you can get that nice silver sheen all the way right up to the knife blade. Yeah, it's really nice. So this wheel here on the right, um, we're just gonna go over right now because it does absolutely nothing. This is the wheel that is like the one on there that allows you to change the water level. So this wheel does nothing, just remember that. Okay, so this wheel here on the front is uh, your course advance. So when you move it, your knife moves forward, and when you move it this way, your knife moves back. Um, and then we have uh, this little knob here, which is your east-west, moves the knife side to side. Um, and then we have, um, we'll talk about that in a second. We got our stuff up here, which is the same as all of the other ones, magnification, focus, forward and back movement. And so and one thing that's really cool about this that I like the way it's set up is this little wheel here. So this little wheel is uh, like the step window and the step buttons combined on, on here. So the first one on the right, you might want to get around to it. So this first uh, wheel on the right actually sets your step size. So right now it's step to, set to 1.5 microns. We'll crank it back to 0 0.5 microns. And so what happens is every time I move this outer one to one of these lines, that's 0 0.5 microns. Mm -hmm. And so whatever I set it to here, I can move this wheel to each one of these lines. And you'll feel that it actually like clicks into place, which is really nice too. Um, and it allows you to move it <coughs> forward. And so something that's weird about this wheel that I think is, like it must have been a mistake when they were designing it. You have to turn it towards you to move the knife forward. So it's... <laughs> It's completely counterintuitive. <laughs> yeah, you gotta turn it this way to go forward, which is, yeah, not the way it should be. Well, I guess if you look at it this way, it's like turning a knob up. Yeah, I guess that's probably what they were thinking. Okay, so, <clears throat> and then you have your cutting wheel here on the right. Um, it's just like the other ones, uh, thumb over the top, it can only move in that direction. Um, don't move it in the other direction. And then you have um, this little wheel here, which is really cool. If you push it down, that starts your motor. And right now it's in the cutting window, that's why it's slowed down. And then you can stop it by putting it in the middle. And then you put it up to set the cutting window. So I'm gonna just go over it right now. So <clears throat> what you wanna do is you wanna set your sample. So, <clears throat> so okay, let me actually start over. So the way it sets the cutting window on this one is you get to tell it when the end of the cutting window is. And then and then you get to also tell it the size of the cutting window. Where on this one, which we'll learn in a little bit, this one you only get to tell it the beginning of the cutting window, and that's it. You don't get to tell it the size or anything else. And then on that one, we get to tell it the beginning and the end, but you don't get to tell it a size, which isn't that useful anyway, but it's just different. So keep those things in mind. Um, might be a quiz question. Um, all right, so um, so the way you set it, so we're gonna set our our sample till it's right above our our knife, and then we move this guy up, and then what you'll see is when you move it, it'll lock in place right there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll move it back so that, and you'll see that this wheel kind of slides. It gives you some resistance, but I'll move it back so that I'm right above my uh, my sample. And then, or actually I think this one is right below, sorry. So I'll move it till I'm right below my sample. And then we have the cutting window here set to just under two millimeters. This is an appropriate cutting window. You probably won't need to change it. But if you notice that the cutting window, like it's like starting, like say you're cutting and then all of a sudden it starts in the middle of your cut, 
that probably means that you need to make your cutting window a little bigger. Mm -hmm. But always keep in mind that the bigger your cutting window is, the slower you're going to be slicing. Mm -hmm. So now that I've, I've set it, now I can, if I go down, it will go through and stop where I've set it, right? And then it'll do, it'll do my cut. And then I can go in the middle, and it'll just stop right there. OK, so what I want to do now is um, I'm going to sort of get this started for you guys. But what we're going to do is we're going to do sort of like a team approach and team sectioning. So that way we all are on the same page. And the reason I do this is so that we can all learn how to communicate of what's going on in the microtome so that when you go ask Rick or Dr. Barlow or myself for help, you can tell us, hey, I was doing this, this, and this, and it'll make sense to us rather than, you know, I was pushing the little thing forward and then this other thing happened and <laughs> so we don't get what you're saying, you know. So I'm going to go ahead and um, sort of get us situated and then we'll each take turns. And, uh, oh, right, so this has the same issue as the other one, where if, if you're in the return stroke, it doesn't want you to make adjustments. But since this is all analog, <coughs> it can't stop me from making the adjustments. So that's why it just beeps at you incessantly until you right. you move back into the cutting stroke. <laughs> can't stop me. <laughs> all right, so what is... The first thing that we're going to do to get aligned. What do you want to make sure is, is right after you put your block face in or your block in? Orientation of the block. Right. So usually the first thing I like to look at is the actual rotation of it right. so that you can set it right. So John, go ahead and take a seat and get the rotation right. So what are you going to set? Like, How do you want to set it so that it's right? What tells you that the rotation is set to the right angle? Um, the light. As it passes through the center of the shadow. No, not quite. So that'll be our other angles, right? So oh. this one is lit it's like it's kind of a choice thing, because we could cut it at any rotation we really want, right? Oh, but what is like the way that you want it to be? The thinner to thicker? Right. So but then let, let me let's start thinking of when we get sections and a ribbon of sections comes off, right? How do we make sure that that ribbon stays straight? As oh, the, yeah. That's, That's right, good. right? So you want the distance, when, so when you're trimming, you want the distance from the top to the bottom of your block to be the same mm -hmm. on both sides. And then when you're on here, what you want to see is that your block comes flat across the, the, the knife edge, right? You don't want it to be like this or like this. You just want it to come straight across, right? Yeah. So what are you going to do? And yeah, it's nothing is right here. So if you guys say that it's adjusted correctly, you're wrong. Let's just put it that way. Okay. How do I move this forward again? So it's the, the wheel that's in front oh, okay. that will it clockwise this forward. So that lets you get a little closer. So when you're adjusting this, would it be a good idea to push it a little further back before actually trying to... Yeah, I, I mean, I like you want it to be, like this looks really close, I think, because we're not looking through the eyepieces, but yeah. it wasn't that close. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, you want it to be close enough that you can tell, but you don't want it to be so close that you're running the danger of running into the, the knife blade. But you can raise it up well above... Yeah, the, just above your knife the edge. The knife edge, so that you're even when you would make an adjustment that it wouldn't jam into the blade. So we're just adjusting the rotation, John, so we're, oh. yeah. So don't try to cut slices because we're not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so if, you're, uh, if this is your knife edge right here, yeah, you, know, you want it to be parallel and, to that. And you have it up here, you can adjust so it up here and adjust. bring it down. So right now so we're adjusting the rotation of the sample. And it comes back. And then you do your adjustment. So that's just a touch and that's then bring the it down. Right. Yeah. And check it. Oh, okay, I see. So just leave it up there. And yeah. Kind of adjust accordingly. I mean, you sort of have to know. So you you have to go through oh, okay. the stroke. So make sure yeah, that you're not going to run into your your knife when you do this. So I would maybe crank yeah. it back a little bit. Yeah. And then, so do like we were saying. Get that top part of the of your block face to come down all in one horizontal line. Perfect. I think what Thomas said is really great about. Tr you, when you trim, you want it parallel, and when you cut, you want it parallel. So it's really, 
like you said, just an extension of trimming. Yeah, I mean, it just really goes to show why trimming is so important. Yeah. If you get your trimming done right, you can section in like 30 minutes. If you really mess right. it up, it'll take you like three hours to get sectioned. Right, really that's serious. absolutely correct. Yeah. 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 That happens to me all the time. So. That happens, yeah, everybody. <laughs> so what you, what you were talking about, Thomas, getting it really close to the sample and then based on like how, how lined they are, like when you get them like really close, if it's like the sample is sideways, it's just trying to adjust it so that they match it. That yeah, so without the whole really close part, we don't need to get really close to find that like angle that you're going to have the block face come across parallel to the knife edge because mm. you're not really looking at the shadow for that. All you're really looking at is the block face going across, right? Mm -hmm. And if you did get too close, you might, because we haven't adjusted the vertical angle or the horizontal angle yet, so if you get too close, you might actually run into your sure. problem. You want to take it? Yeah. Okay. So, Jared, go ahead and take a seat and tell me if you think that John did a good job. Yeah. He's close, a little bit off though. Okay, so if you think you need to make an adjustment, tell me what it is before you make it okay. and why you're making it. Um, I would adjust it so that, well, based on what I see between the knife and the block face, I think that it's creating like a bit of an angle originating from the left side and increasing in size towards the right. So I would turn the block like this to try and get it to be more parallel. Okay, so that's a good observation, but right now we're just focusing on the rotation of the block. Right? Oh, just on the block? Yeah, the adjustment that John was making. So all he did was make the block either, like, did he make it so that the top of the block face is parallel to the knife edge, do you think? Yeah, I think he did all, just about all he can do. Okay, so the way you can check it is you can bring your knife a little closer to your sample, mm -hmm and then let your sample go across the edge of your knife and see if that top part disappears all at the same time. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? So once you get close to your block face, mm -hmm. you're gonna move your, you're gonna use the cutting wheel to have the, the block go up and down. Mm -hmm. And as the block goes past the edge of the knife, you wanna see that top part of the block be parallel with the knife edge. So that yeah. when it passes the knife edge, the whole top <coughs> of the block disappears at the same time. Got it. What we're gonna do is, uh, the first thing we wanna do is set the, the cutting window, right? Automatic. So, switch. yeah, so uh, with a motor. So what we do is we're gonna go ahead and set the, uh, set the, the sample right above our knife edge, and then we're gonna pull this lever up so that it goes to the lock position, and you'll see that you, can, you move it a little bit, and then it's gonna lock on you. Mm -hmm. And then you can go ahead and move this back so that it's, um, just past your block face mm. and then you could set your cutting window size here which like we said it's right under two two millimeters which is going to work just fine <clears throat> and then you go over to your panel here and you have it split up for thin sections and thick sections so if you guys notice the the units are different so up here we have nanometers and down here we have micrometers mm. so we have it set to 300 microns um, and then here we have our cutting speed, which we can do like on that other one. We'll do half a micron or millimeter per second. And then after that, we can just go ahead and look through the eyepieces and start the motor by putting the lever down. Yeah, see, that was not so good. So we didn't set the, the cutting window right. It was a little too low. So here's what I'll do. I'll set it to the top. Go, oh, I meant to go up. And then we'll lock. And then, yeah, we're going to set it. So I think we got to set it right below the sample. Let me check. Yep. OK, so write this down. You're going to be setting the, the block to just under the edge of the knife. So we'll stop it here. So say you have your, your, your block up here. We're going to go up on the lever and then we'll move it until it locks and then we're going to move that until we get to that just under the the, 
block. That was probably a little too far. So it will be just under the block. And then when you go all the way down, it should have it set up just right. So like just like right after clearing the... Yeah, the right after there. clearing the, the, eight, the edge there. So like this time I went a little too far. So I'll go like this. And now it's going to go ahead and cut cut some sections for me. So I think that there's something either wrong with this knife or this block. Um, not in terms of trimming or anything, just like what it's made out of. Because the sections are coming off really, really weird. And they're even making a sound. But you guys can watch. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. But maybe you have to record that thing. I think maybe it's just a really cool knife. Yeah, I mean, it's been used a lot. So. That's right, we can use it. It looks bad. You can actually see it. You hear that? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like a squeaky noise. It's taking off even sections. So that's how you get automatic sections on this one. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to move to this microchip. Is this one of your guys' samples that's just sitting there? Uh, oh, I don't know if it's... Wait, no, it's not mine. I took mine. Out. Will you okay. We'll use it. Was this the other guy? <laughs> that was here with this mine. Oh, Jeremy? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Alright, so we're going to move on to this microtome now. So how are those knives coming along? Do we have some knives yet? So I mean, did you put you... a boat on both of them? No, just one. Just one? Cool. So I'll take the one without the boat. You want to try to this? Or the one without the boat? Okay, whatever. Alright, so on this one, um, these buttons, a lot less buttons, which is cool. Um, so G is whatever the German thing for power is, or Swiss, I guess, or Austrian, whatever. Um, and then L is whatever the Austrian word for light is, but it's just light. <laughs> and then T is the, it starts your thermal advance. And then M will start your motor. And then you have your little uh, dials here that allow you to to set your, your values. So we're gonna go ahead and turn the light on. And so the first thing that we do when we're gonna use a block that we haven't used yet is to examine the block to make sure that it's usable. Okay, so this block has been pretty nicely trimmed, but the block face is not even at all, so that means that we're gonna have to face it before that before we are able to actually trim it. So I'll we'll put it in this way. Alright. So this is gonna be five meters. And then here's gonna check we have any seven. He's doing the same thing with dinner. Yeah, and this one should be the easiest for you guys since you guys have been sitting here for the last couple weeks. Should be. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm going to get it set up and then I want you guys to get sections. Yes, sir. <clears throat> 
And then when we get to the point where we can actually cut some sections, I'll show you guys how to do it with the, with the thermal advance. <coughs> Dan, Chris. All right. Gross. Are you sick? Yeah. That sucks. Sorry to hear that. You're gonna yeah. get us sick. That's fine. Oh, we in really a closed sorry. room, man. That's why I'm trying to stay out of here. <laughs> we in a closed area. <laughs> sorry, guys. <clears throat> Fudgy, not accepting. <laughs> All right. So let's too. go ahead and align this. <laughs> Jared, you can go first. <laughs> setting and then we also found that the little dot here is a pretty good setting as well for this and so this one actually lets you adjust the cutting speed as well as the return speed which is different from the other ones where you're not allowed to to get the return speed so again remember that these are all things that are possible quiz questions um, so so we're gonna go ahead and put the cutting speed actually we'll do the blue dot for now so the red dot is a little too fast for us um, and so this one, um, so again, so that one you can set both the start and the end of the cutting window. This one you're allowed to set the end of the cutting window. This one you got to set the beginning of the cutting window. So what you do is you, <clears throat> you get your sample just above your, your knife edge. And then what you're going to do is, this one's almost right, you're going to align this little disc with that has a line on it with the line that's on the microtome. So what you do is you hold on to the microtome wheel and you don't let it move and you just move this part of it. Like that. And then that will let you set the start of the cutting window. And so then what you want to do is you can turn on your thermal advance. And I, we've said this to you guys a few times already, but in case you don't remember, the way it works is there's a light bulb in here that's going to be heating up a filament when it heats up and that filament is what's going to be causing the, the arm to move forward. So we turn on our thermal, and then we can go ahead and, so when you turn on the motor, you never really wanna be like right above your sample, cause when it turns on, it's just gonna like really quickly go, so you don't wanna do that. So that's why I just went right below it. And then you can hit your motor, and then it starts to go, and then it'll set your cutting window there. So I set the cutting window a little too high this time, so I'm going to go ahead and go just past my sample. Mm. I'm going to move this back. So that time it was a little too much, so mm. I'm going to go. So it seems like being right at your sample is maybe a little above it is about the right. Let's try again. Like right before the edge? Yeah. So you guys will just have to mess around and like see what the best way is. Because also um, what can happen is when you're moving this, you can move the wheel a little bit and it'll, whoops, and it'll, uh, it'll cause the whole window to change. So yeah, like this is still... Sample and set this guy out of Ugh. Yeah, it takes a lot of messing around with this thing to get it right. So this one's just trial and error. I feel like is it registering is it setting the end of the cutting cycle or the Beginning, right? Beginning. Oh, it, it seems like down. it's it seems like it's registering the end. Like boom, that's how it's supposed to. These are all Yeah, I think it's setting the end. Yeah. Okay. Is that that's not what I said, huh? Okay. No, it's it's the beginning. Beginning. Sorry, so it's it the sets end. the yeah. end. So yeah. both of these set the end first. So this sets the end. And oh. I guess we can go check the other one and see. So let's look at this one. Can you Maybe it's this one sets the end. That one sets the end, so 
on it just at the beginning of my cutting window. Alright, so if I wanted that to be the beginning of my cutting window, so I would go up to this top guy and then lock it. So, okay, so I want this to be the beginning of my cutting window. <laughs> Okay, so yes. This will set the start of your cutting window. <clears throat> Actually, I don't know. Let me see here. That looks like the end. Yeah. Oh, damn. This guy. Okay, so let's do the right. I'm going to set it right at the block so that will tell us. Yeah, so this allows you to set the end of the cutting window. The end of the cutting window. So both of these are end. So apparently so, yes. Okay. But they, they both have weird characteristics, right? So this one you're going to want to set just above what you want it to be at, like just above what you want the end of the cutting window to be at. So like basically right at your knife edge. Yeah. Where that one you can you're gonna have to mess around with it a little bit more. It's I think it's cool. more yeah. But okay. All right. So that's about it. Um, keep in mind um, a lot of these things that we talked about, um, like how you check the vertical angle, um, what different knobs on the microtones do what the different features of the microtomes are, um, things like that. Uh, yeah, so keep those things in mind. Um, if there's anything else that I can think of, I'll email you guys. Um, and yeah, good job today. And the more you cut sections, the easier it gets. Yeah. I mean, you do it over and over, it just gets to be, oh, yeah. Can you check my pick section, please? <clears throat> can you check my pick section, please?